Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Dark Souls 3 Lore Through. Um, my audio got corrupted <clears throat> for the next three episodes. Unfortunately, uh, so I have, it got corrupted, meaning that I have to just re-record a voiceover for all of this, but uh, we are not going to be able to get game audio. Um, and I also am not going to know what I'm talking about for a lot of time, so I'm probably just going to ramble and we're just going to go here. Um, I'm going to take care of some loose ends in this video, and you know, part of that is coming back to the Smoldering Lake and uh, grabbing a few of these items in the lava. And uh, so I have a lot of fire defense and all this stuff. Um, I've also redone my specs. I farmed a lot. I have a new build. Uh, I'm still learning the build. Um, I, you know, I go through these next three episodes and I struggle quite a bit trying to kind of get the good balance of my my traditional style of play and trying new items and trying new things and just doing uh, whatever. So anyway, so I have high fire resist here and I'm going to be coming in. Of course, that's an ember and that's really, you know, annoying that <laughs> you risk dying for uh, an ember. But this is Sacred Flame, a unique item, and I can't get back in time. So we will... Um... I did get a lot of embers from farming. Man, I had so many good lore points. Um, hopefully I can remember them all. Because um, we do, like, the Consumed King, we do the Untended Graves, we do all that stuff. So um, hopefully it will be... Um, you know, I'll be able to recall a lot of stuff. I did realize a lot of stuff was worth playing, so I will amend it, and uh, my controller just died, um, by the way, so that was me plugging it back in. Um, I will pretend as if I realized all these things from the get-go now that I've realized them, so... Um, <laughs> the best part about editing yourself, you can come back and pretend you know everything. Um... So we're going to the second <clears throat> uh, lava area. So we got the, uh, was it Profound Flame or something? So we got the flame that uh, you can punch into someone. It's pretty cool, Pyromancy. You punch them and then they explode inside with flame. And, um, and this one, there's actually two, both of these items are unique and important. One's a pyromancy, one's a talisman, actually. Yeah, you can see I have 11 embers from farming and stuff like that, so we have enough to kind of get through here. Although, I waste them all in this uh, next three episodes. <laughs> uh, I get freaked out because there's uh, um, slimes in there, and I wasn't sure um, if I'd be able to grab the item without dying, but, you know... So we get Toxic Mist, which we know from Engie's kind of thing. Uh, that was one of his spells. And then this is a new item to Dark Souls 3, the White Hair Talisman. And I just, you know, we weren't going to get back at all. So I just let myself die there. So... Um, we have a bunch of new items from farming. I went around the whole game and I got, I kind of farmed a couple of things just to get a, a few more items with the symbol of avarice and the gold serpent ring. So we do have tons of stuff to kind of look at um, and, uh, and, and, and go over. Before we do that, however, uh, I'm going to get an item which, you know, I, um, I could have gotten a long time ago, but I just, because of the way that I was thinking, oh, I, sorry, while we are in, um, Smoldering Lake, um, you can see all the items here I've gotten, um, I'm trying to switch back to my normal set that I'm going to be wearing for this build. There's a, uh, Black Knight, um, in this area, in a, behind a secret wall that I totally didn't see, 
uh, or remember. Uh, and it's funny because in the area where they are, where it is, when I was playing through there, I was like, I have a spidey sense of of, of a hidden wall somewhere in here. Um, and I found another one, but it's not the one that I, I was thinking of. So um, I'm going to walk around here a bit and uh, and struggle to find it, of course, um, for a bit. But uh, I eventually get the right wall, and uh, and then we can see what's going on there. I am using Lightning Blade for now. Um, and I've been trying to maximize my use of Wrath of Gods and such. And uh, it's been going up decently. Um, I don't know, you'll see in this episode, like, um, you can also see I've maxed out my... Uh, yeah, so that, that worked well for that. Those guys. Doesn't always work that well for me. <laughs> um, you can see that I've maxed out my Titanite Shards, because I kind of farmed in Anorlando for a bit. Um, but, um, yeah, so, um, far, so I went through the whole game with my current build, and I got, like, 300,000 souls <laughs> from doing it, um, and so I kind of, uh, you know, it's funny, I just went through this area and went and got to that, uh, can't hit this guy for the life of me. Um, I went through and I just found where the Black Knight is, and I, I actually can't remember where it is from here. That shows how <laughs> ignorant I am of the of that location. So, but I went through the whole game with my new build and tried to kind of get items that I felt were important from certain characters. I mean, I didn't I didn't go completely exhaustive or anything. Um, but I did get quite a few things from, um, like, the Cathedral of the Deep, the Road of Sacrifices. I got a lot of stuff from the Grues. Um, I got some um, Silver Knight stuff. I got Deacon stuff. I got, I got a lot of stuff. I mean, you'll obviously see all that stuff. Um... I'm just looking up where to go. Um, unsuccessfully, I believe. Um, so what I'm kind of planning to do for this episode is I'm going to get all of the stuff here in Smoldering Lake that I left behind. We're going to go get Henri Straight Sword, which um, we haven't... Uh, I forgot to pick up for various reasons. I'll explain that in a second. And then we're just going to read everything, and then we're going to beat uh, the dancer. Okay, so, um, yeah, so there's an axe black knight here in the smoldering um, lake, which I guess can be justified by, yeah, in his poise bricks through my unfaltering prayer. And I can't even get this off. But yeah, I got it I got it off, but it get, did 51 damage because he was blocking, so... But I guess it makes sense that the uh, Black Knight is here because, you know, this is Isolith and uh, this is where the Black Knights would have been fighting Chaos Demons, at least in some part. So, But uh, he killed the Gru for us and we killed him and for our troubles we got the Black Knight Sword, which unfortunately doesn't have a ton of great lore on it. Um, but... Uh, as I say, we're just going to read everything at once, so I'm just going to try to run to the nearest uh, bonfire and go to Anorlando so that we can get Henry's straight sword. Um, I'm sorry, by the way, that we, we kind of have to uh, watch this without the sounds and, and just voiceover commentary. I think the commentary will probably be better because I'm not distracted, but... I know how annoying it is to watch gameplay footage without sound, so, you know, apologies. Um, I could turn the sound on, but you would hear the sound, and then you would hear little chipmunk voices from my driver not working or whatever. Anyway, 
Note to self, constantly test before committing to three hour-long recordings. Okay, so um, the reason that I didn't um, pick this up right away um, was because I, you know, I tend to put, I, I tend to do Henri's quest line. I, I don't tend to do the usurp, the fire ending, and I tend to kill the pilgrim that comes to uh, steal her, assassinate her, or whatever, in um, the church of Yorshka. And when I do that, she goes on to live, and then we do a different story with her. You don't marry her, and you just, you complete her quest going to um, Aldrich. And I, um, you know, that's why I was kind of confused because I kept saying, oh, I think the next episode's going to open with us fighting Aldrich because I, I just thought you did that no matter what, and that's how you get her sword normally and, uh, and all this stuff. So, um, anyway, um, the way that you end up getting her sword is that after you kill her with the sacrificial sword or whatever that looks like one of those uh, crucifixion crosses, um, you come back to Gwyn's tomb in the Darkmoon tomb, or whatever it is considered in this game, and her body has been removed, presumably by Yuria, and 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 remaining is her item um, so we're not, we've kind of done the last few things here so I think we're gonna go back and start reading everything um, certainly I don't think we need to talk to anyone or, or read any items in, in the inventory so we'll just get right into it I still believe that there's an item that I didn't read, but I try to find it and I can't, so if there's an item I've missed, I apologize. Um, so Sacred Flame. <clears throat> Pyromancy taught among savages, originally used in a ceremony for cleansing sacrificial impurities, thereby leading, lending the spell its name. As barbaric as it seems, this may be in fact quite fitting for the savage pyromancers who consider themselves servants of the divine. Pyromancy has a very interesting line. I've talked about this since Dark Souls 1. But, uh, toxic Mist, unique pyromancy of Engi that never gained currency in the Great Swamp. Driven from the Great Swamp, they say that at the end of his journey, Engi happened upon a virulent poison and a young lady. And we know how that story ends. Um, yeah. So these are from the Grues. They're in the Farren Keep. They're in the Smoldering Lake. We were just fighting them there too, but they're from mainly the Farren Keep. Uh, they have three weapons, and I think I got all three of them. And I think they all say the same thing, but um, yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. A crude half rotten dagger, choice weapon of the blunt horned Grues, descendant of the acolytes of Farron Keep. The rancid blade is drenched in rotten waste, making it acutely poisonous. And it's a quick, quick step because it's a dagger. Uh, and then this is the Corvian Great Knife on the Road of Sacrifices. There's those Corvians, or those things that turn into crows. Um, anyway, Dagger of the Unwanted, those guided by heretical storytellers. A rather large dagger with a powerful attack, but this transparent attempt to intimidate foes reveals much about its owner's fears. Um, so, Corvians could be a descendant of the Crow people in the painting of Ariamis. It does say Dagger of the Unwanted, and that's kind of what the painting of Ariamis was all about. And it says they're guided by the storytellers, who are heretical as well. And uh, we'll read an item description about those guys. Um, but these are um, potentially related to the painting of Ariamis um, and Velka and the Crow People and all that stuff. And their skill is Blind Spot. Use against shielded foes to break through their card. We read all these. Dark Sword. It's obviously the Dark Wraiths in Fern Keep. 
Pitch black, straight sword of the Dark Wraith, survivor of the land swallowed by darkness. The Dark Wraiths were the first red orb invaders and originators of a unique sword technique inspired by their thick, broad blades. Not a ton of lore there. Henri straight sword, we just got that sword precious to Henri, another unkindled. The dullest type of blade found in the ruined land of Stora. Only it was once the sword of an earnestly noble figure, and its attacks are boosted by that elusive essential property unique to humans, luck. And maybe it would have been a you know, luck probably would have been a good choice for a build for me because I wanted items to drop, but uh I didn't, and this might have been my good sword that I should have used, but whatever. It's definitely for a certain type of build, because no one ever levels up luck, <laughs> ever. Um, just because you have one sword to pick from. Uh, great sword wield by the Black Knights who wander the lands, designed to face chaos demons. The unique attack of the sword greatly reduces enemy poise, reflecting the tremendous size of the enemies that the knights have fearlessly faced. And it's got perseverance, which is kind of a miracle based one which makes sense because they're you know loyal to Gwyn yeah so these are just the same here we've read Pawn of Night, Curved Sword, uh, Crew Spear is the same description and what's interesting is this immolation tinder I got this from the Fire Witches and these guys are in um, Irithyll, and they're the guys that shoot fire at you, and and I was saying, I hope we get something by them, like their armor or something. Well, I got a lot of their stuff, so this is their staff. Profane flame wielded by the Irithylian witches, frigid spirits roaming the Boreal Valley. This torch, both a weapon and a staff, is enshrouded in an everlasting flame. Skill is punitive flame. Punish foes with a flame that blankets the ground. So it is the profane flame, uh, as if it's different than a pyromancy. Also, we know that um, Sullivan went to the profane capital when he was a young sorcerer and kind of found the profane flame underneath Irithyll or Bo the Boreal Valley. And so it's no wonder that the people in his um, service use it. Uh, we'll talk about that more later. It's the Storyteller Staff. So I found this on the road. Sacrifices. These are the Storytellers of the Corvians. Staff of a heretic storyteller who shares tales of the painted world to forlorn souls. The Storytellers, too, are wretched beings with no place to go. Their bodies, souls, and even their staves are all tainted through and through. Poisonous spores, which is actually a very powerful skill. But yeah, it is related to this painted world. It doesn't say very ominous, but um, you know, it is about. I think the Corvians, the Crow people, and the Unwanted are all related. So, Tal uh, white hair talisman, talisman made with a lock of white hair. This lock of hair belonged to a deformed member of the Chaos, which is mothers of the art of pyromancy, um, miracles, and pyromancies, which is interesting. So I guess that's. Uh, uh, Quaylag or the Fair Lady? Probably the Fair Maiden, if I had to guess. I didn't see her hair color. Here's a Gru Rot Shield, a rotting makeshift shield scavenged by the forest dwelling Grus. Barely effective as a shield, um, but it's so poisonous that it, as a shield bash, it can poison other people. The Silver Knight Shield, heavy shield carried by the Silver Knights who served the old royal family. A flowing canal is chiseled deeply into its face. The Silver Knights stayed behind to protect the humble manor and ruined cathedral. Uh, though their goddess has long since left, her blessing upon her knights' shield remains. Knights' shields remains. And then Cathedral Knight, a uh, great shield. A heavy iron shield used by the Knights of the Cathedral of the Deep. The blessing of the Cathedral have granted it high dark absorption. The face of the shield is decorated with the emblem of an old king of Lothric, a bold image of a great bird gazing skywards. Let's remember that for later. I had incorrectly said those were the Lothric Knights, but I guess they're the Cathedral Knights. My apologies. But... I have a theory about the old king of Lothric and that it's somehow related to something here. So, um, but yeah. Then we have the Pontiff Knight crown. We've read this before. Um, 
report directly to Sullivan. His, his eyes and ears, whatever. But we do have the Fire Witch uh, helm, which tells us more. Helm of the witches who bore the profane flame, now harrowed spirits of Arathil. The witches who led the Pontiff's Knights were originally ordained as holy knights. It was not long, however, before their hearts were swallowed by the profane flame. So it's interesting because they, for one, they headed up the knights, which is cool, even the outlet. Outrider Knights, probably. But they were holy knights and then became corrupted from the profane flame, as if the profane flame is kind of corrupting and dark, as we've kind of read before. It's interesting. Obviously, Sullivan was corrupted by it. His fire witches were as well. Um, yeah, so the profane flame, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, as is the deep. I kind of talk about a few of them here, um, but let's move on. Bone mask of the dark wraiths, relics of a small country that fell to dark long ago, looks as if, as if it might crumble to dust at any moment. The dark wraiths were the oldest of the red eye invaders and rumored to have served a primordial serpent. Helm of the Silver Knights, it is said that even after the family's passing, the knights continue to watch over their manor and the ruined cathedral. Uh, and this is from the Undead Settlement, hat worn by inhabitants of the Undead Settlement, official attire for the dissection and burial of undead. Naturally, the ceremonial significance of such work is long forgotten. Indeed, no one could continue to entertain such horrors. And we learned all about that. And uh, There was dissecting racks, there was mound makers, there was other, the blue bug, bug pellets or the black bug pellets talking about cremation and all this stuff. So that's definitely what the Undead Sentinel was all about um, after, I guess, you know, these people descended on it, whoever they might be. We see similar versions of them in the profane capital. I don't know if they came from there to harvest them in some way. Obviously, we found people from the Cathedral of the Deep there, too. Thrallhood. Hood used to cover the head of lesser folk who were set uh, to work as slaves throughout Lothric. Also occasionally used to shrine and humiliate, or shame and humiliate criminals, as Grey Rat is wearing. Fire Witch Armor, no different um, there. Silver Knight, no different there. Deacon Robe. Robe worn by deacons of the Cathedral of the Deep. The red, deep red pigment denotes the blessing of fire. In time, those dedicated to sealing away the horrors of the deep succumb to their very power. It seems that neither tending to the flame nor the faith could save them. So again, the deep corrupt, corrupting nature of the deep, similar to the profane flame for Sullivan's crew. Uh, you know, Aldrich had an issue with the deep, and Sullivan had an issue with the profane flame. Maybe they're related. Maybe not. It's interesting. And then I just have the worker garb here, and that's just from the Undead uh, Settlement as well. It doesn't say anything new. Yeah. Okay. Um... So now we move on. We have the Cathedral Knight Gauntlets. Repulsive creatures of the deep are sure to attract the foolish, but the Cathedral Knights are prepared to meet such intruders head-on with their more than ample might. So um, the deep didn't corrupt the Cathedral Knights, probably because, like we saw, the shield was blessed and was aver averse to the deep and the dark um, as a sort of protection, something that the Deacons didn't have. The blue-gray gauntlet shrouded in a thinly cold air is light and brittle. I think we read the Pond of Night, Night gauntlets or something else. Then we have the dark um, gauntlets, um, but it's the same lore. Silver Knights, same lore. Uh, evangelist gloves, I think we read this before, but these teachers, all women, came to enlighten inhabitants of the undead settlement and sent carriers on the path of sacrifice. We knew they were collecting them for the Cathedral of the Deep, probably for Aldrich's feeding. Uh, Cathedral Knight leggings, same description. Fire Witch 
uh, same description, dark, same description, silver knight, same description, uh, and workers, pretty much similar, just left some stuff out. So anyway, that's all the stuff that I got. Um, um, with my farming, um, and, uh, yeah, this is my new build, <laughs> and, uh, I might do that for the next section, too, because my new build doesn't have any item discovery things set up, so, um, so anyway, I'm just going to clear out my inventory here and, uh, get ready for the next section of, um, the game, which is Lothar Castle, incidentally. Um, although, you know, we kind of do side areas for a bit. We don't really get into Lothar Castle, um, very much, but, um, so yeah, the first thing is that we're going to go fight this, uh, um, boss. When we killed Yorm, which was our third Lord's, uh, Lord of Cinder, we were brought to this kind of cathedral that we first met uh, Emma in. She gave us the small banner of Lothric. She gave us the blue set or the way of blue uh, covenant, and kind of told us some stuff. Um, but when we got there, she was on the floor. She was not doing well or whatever. By the way, watch how my uh, poise break just completely obliterates these knights now. Um, I just, I don't even care. I just, I just go for it and tank damage, which obviously does no damage to me anymore. In fact, I stun him. I just, revenge is, payback is so sweet. Anyway, um, so... Anyway, we're supposed to go in here, and um, she gives us something, and we can kind of move on with the story. But during that process, uh, someone comes to stop us, and uh, I'm just mentioning that I made my sword heavy and my little and shield blessed so that I slightly recover uh, HP. Um, but anyway, um, someone tries to stop us, and we kind of do know about this. We read in Vort's description that the dancer was always close by. We saw in Irithyll that there was two people that left. Um, uh, one that looked, well, one that looked like this boss, and, you know, you wouldn't have known that at the time, and one that could possibly have looked like Vort if he had transformed. Um... So in a sense, we, you know, have anticipated this boss, but, you know, I mean, that's only if you're really, uh, you know, working at something. So here she talks about uh, Lothric again, and she's like, he must be a lord. Um, we'll get into the details of that later, but... Um, Yeah, there, there's certainly something about Lothric and 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 being a Lord of Cinder that is there to um, study. But anyway, she gave us this face in a, ba a basin of vows, and uh, placed the basin on a statue of a beheading knight. Chalice used in old ceremony in which Lothric knights take their vows. It is only a formality now, but it remains as an empty practice. Uh, place the basin. Uh, something beneath the beheading statue. Um, I'm looking for help because I'm not great with the dancer. I'm not great with a number of bosses coming up uh, here, uh, especially while learning a new build. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I die quite a few times here, so strap in for the ride. Um, so anyway, I put, I attempt to put the ba the, the basin down, but, uh, before I can, the door closes and something starts dripping from the ceiling and I look up and there is 
something. And it does look Erythelian, for sure. It looks like those knights there. It looks a little bit like Vort, but not as fat. And it has kind of two, it has the swords that look the same, and it has two swords at that. Uh, one of which is a flame, and one of which is a kind of, I guess, dark, but it could be magic based. Uh, it's only using one sword now, but um, that evokes um, Pawn of Sullivan. Also, there's a bunch of like associations with the dancer here, um, which is. I'm not sure what to make of everything that this game is giving us, but um, first of all, the dancer, you know, I mean, it reminds me of, you know, we've talked about this before, it reminds me of Nadalia. Nadalia was said to be a dancer um, uh, who became very lonely or whatever. Um, I try to do Wrath of Gods like three times here, and I just fail every time. Uh, but also, um, you know, the 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 um, Priscilla and her uh, um, painting guardians were. I mean, the painting guardians definitely have, um, you know, the dancing kind of effect that we see here with the dancers moves especially with these kind of daggers because uh, the painting guardian swords are very short um, and uh, note by the way that everything that the dancers flame sword touches it gets set on fire and the fire actually spreads naturally which is kind of a nice touch so now uh, yeah she's using the two daggers now one kind of flame and one kind of not magic like Pontiff but dark. So anyway, uh, so the painting guardians um, who you know it, are um, you know they said that they got their skills from Priscilla. Uh, but at the same time, a lot of their, like, look and even, you know, something that I guess is more similar to um, the paint, the dancer, is um, Lord's Blade Siaran, who has the kind of two blades um, like that, like the gold tracer and, the, and their two daggers and whatnot. Um, so all of those things are related. I don't know what it's meant to mean exactly, specifically because when you actually um, uh, look at the soul, the description, and what items it creates, it kind of go, takes a left turn and goes for another reference that I definitely don't get. Um, by the way, I, you know, I, you know, I don't have a lot of tolerance for uh, stuff like this, so I end up finding a, a second summon so that I can send this loser home. Um, so apologies. Um, But you know, I, I, I'm I'm unclear as to the like origin of the dancer and how it relates to other things and whatever. So um, I don't know. I think it's all you know up for theories and stuff like that, and that's what's fun about it. But I wish I could give a more definitive answer, um, but I can't. But I mean, we'll get to that in a second. Um, so anyway, yeah, see, like, the way the flame comes around when she swings that definitely looks like uh, Lord's Blade Ciaran's, like, gold tracer, the way it, like, streaks through. 
but she doesn't cause bleed or anything. There's her big dance move, which is crazy. You just have to run away when that happens. Um, so I'm trying to take the opportunity of distracting her with uh, getting off Wrath of the Gods, but I'm I'm even just having a hard time approaching her. Um, being so unfamiliar with your move set. But I get a good one in there. I'm pretty sure uh, I went on this one round, so. And there it is, Dancer of the Boreal Valley. Um, no longer an issue. I have to do the Patches Squad in solidarity. All right. So that was easy, kind of, except I had help because I need to get good. Um, so let's read the Soul of the Dancer. Um, the Pond of Sullivan bestowed a double slashing sword upon a distant daughter of the former royal family, ordering her to serve first as a dancer and then as an outrider knight, the equivalent to exile. So I guess Outrider Knights was kind of like somewhat a bad thing. But a distant daughter of the royal family, I mean, so I mean that would be maybe Gwendolyn, but Guinevere? Um, I mean, maybe Lord's Blade Ciaran counts, but maybe Priscilla counts because it's Velka and that's a royal family? I, I don't know. I, We'll see in a bit that it gets more confusing. Um, especially since Guinevere is, in my estimation, from a number of hints, a character in this game. She's both referred to as Guinevere and as another name. I don't know. It's just... I don't know if this if anyone's parsed this out and maybe me sitting here going I don't get it for long enough will be I'll eventually be like oh yeah that's the deal with it or whatever so okay so yeah our next kind of area that we're going to go to is not into Lothric castle proper but we are going to kind of look at the Consumed King's Garden. Um, who is the Consumed King? Maybe it's the former King of Lothric mentioned in the Cathedral Knight set. Maybe it's the Queen of Lothric's husband, the King of Lothric, that king, related to the son named Lothric, like as a, as a hint. Like, he was named Lothric, not because that's his name, and then the kingdom was named after that. The kingdom was named Lothric, and they named him Lothric in a last-ditch effort. I f we read that somewhere. But anyway, we put the Basin of Vows down. And what's kind of interesting is that, yeah, we've seen these beheading knight in the very, very beginning in certain forms. Uh, but this one actually, like, moves and interacts and starts dripping some sort of substance um, blood or deep or dark or pus or an illusion but anyway uh, once a former way to have the Lothric Knights take their vows which is kind of a very morose way to do so um, it now serves as a ritual, but allows access to the castle proper, where obviously a lot of Lothric knights exist, which I'm not excited about fighting. So, oh, I like the places that were on fire are now, like, extinguished and smoking, and the parts that weren't on fire are not smoking or anything. It's kind of a nice touch. Uh, 
Um, okay, that's the end of the episode. <laughs> I'm just going to do the rest in the next. Thanks for watching. Join me next time.